Joining me now to talk more about this, uh, we have uh, continue to have with us Rick Davis, CBSN political contributor, former John McCain campaign manager. We're also joined by Liz Plank, senior Vox campaign correspondent. Uh, Rick, first of all, let me start with you. This was as an emotional moment as I have seen, obviously, on day one here. This was a moment when, as I looked around the convention hall here, people were on their feet, they were in tears as they listened to this mother's account of what she says happened when she met with Hillary Clinton. Uh, tell me about this line of attack. Uh, what did you make of that? Well, it's sort of the latter-day swift building of Hillary Clinton. You know, we saw similar tactics used with John Kerry in the campaign in 2004, where uh, you know, people who knew his duty in Vietnam were critical of it, his boasts for taking credit. And this was just a slight twist on that same thing. People who were close to uh, uh, folks in Benghazi who lost their lives serving their country, uh, testifying in front of uh, the convention here, and the, the video that was just played was right out of the swift boat genre. You know, people standing up talking about historical accounts that you know may or may not be as accurate as they should be, but nonetheless paint a picture of negligence. Uh, of lying uh, to the American people. And uh, so we've seen these tactics before. They're very effective unless they're responded to. And I would say that's, you know, one of the reasons that there's still uh, quite a bit of debate on this is that I don't think uh, Secretary Clinton has ever adequately answered the questions uh, surrounding Benghazi. So until then, it'll, it'll be a pretty significant issue. Uh, I expect this to be a common theme with the Republican uh, frontrunner Donald Trump uh, throughout the course of the campaign. Liz, what did you make of what you heard tonight? I mean, I'd have to disagree a little bit that she hasn't uh, adequately responded to questions. She spent hours, you know, I think 13 hours responding to the Benghazi Commission, and, and, and actually that was a great week for her because I think in that uh, moment showed that she, she was presidential. Obviously, there was negligence. Obviously, there were mistakes that were made, um, but, but, but she went and responded to every question that was asked uh, to her. And, and, but I, but I, uh, I agree with Rick. I mean, this uh, speech, I think, was the most, wa I mean, the, the entire room went silent. As you said, there were tears. Everyone paid attention. I was emotional. It's hard not to be emotional when, you know, there's a, a mother um, talking about her son that, you know, we all wish that he was there uh, and, and he was still with us. Um, so, so I see this attack, this line of attack uh, being persistent throughout the campaign because, as Rick that it is effective. One of the things that prompted one of the strongest responses from the crowd, uh, Rick, was when at one point she said, Donald Trump is everything that Hillary Clinton is not. He will not hesitate to kill the terrorists who threaten American lives. So thereby trying to draw a contrast, obviously, uh, between Donald Trump and Hillary Clinton. Uh, what do you make of that, uh, you know, where she's obviously reinforcing, trying to underscore something he himself has said many, many times? Yeah, I I, I, he's talking to the crowd of the most polarized people in America, right? I mean, these are stalwart Republicans who, you know, are not going to um, like anything Hillary Clinton does. And it is a bit of a false argument, the idea that Hillary Clinton isn't for killing terrorists. But Donald Trump is. But it sounds great at a convention, and it does point to the polarization. Our guy can beat up your guy anytime. It's a little bit bully, and uh, yet it's great fodder for a convention. Whether something like that really makes its way into the uh, into the campaign is a little dicey because I mean Donald Trump. Um, by his own profession, was opposed to the Iraq war. Lots of terrorists in Iraq. I think Hillary Clinton could certainly use the argument that she was prepared and did uh, vote to go to Iraq and kill terrorists there, and Donald Trump wouldn't have done it. Um, kind of an unpopular thing to want to do, but it is a fact, and one that Donald Trump uh, has pointed out a lot lately, uh, especially in deference to his current running mate, who was also on Hillary's side of uh, supporting the war in Iraq. So. I think this is an open question, and I, I really look forward to this question being asked at the first presidential debate. Uh, Liz, how do you see it? Who do you think has the advantage on this issue of national security? I think Donald Trump has the advantage that he's very vague and has totally uh, confusing positions on it. So at the same time, he can seem non-interventionist. I mean, during his 60 Minutes interview where he was uh, with his running mate, he made a, he gave a very confusing answer where he said it's war. Again, 
against uh, ISIS. And then God asked, okay, so you mean troops on the ground? No, 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 no troops on the ground, using NATO, but pulling out of NATO. I mean, it's, it, in, in his answer, he contradicted himself about three times. Um, and so he can be seen as this, um, you know, leader who is tough, uh, and we're going to hear that line a lot uh, during the convention, but at the same time, non-interventionist and not getting involved. So, so he's kind of playing both sides right now. And so it's giving him an advantage um, until a certain point, until he gets asked at debates or, or by journalists um, to, to, to explain that position. That's completely confusing. At the same time, uh, we were talking to Nancy Cordes earlier, uh, Hillary Clinton continues to have issues when it comes to honest and trustworthiness. The poll numbers uh, bear that out, that this has continued to be a challenge for her. And in fact, we heard in the speech tonight by Pat Smith, she said, Hillary Clinton can't give us the truth. Why should we give her the presidency? Uh, what do you think the strategy uh, of the campaign needs to be going forward? Donald Trump himself, in his nickname for Hillary Clinton, calls her crooked Hillary Clinton. I think this is, again, a very confusing line of attack because it's coming from Donald Trump, a man who has, I believe, a 2 percent uh, truth rating on PolitiFact. Um, you know, Donald Trump lies a lot. I mean, that's just a fact. Um, and so for, for his campaign to really bank on this idea that Hillary lies and that Hillary is not trustworthy um, is, is working with, with uh, his demo and is working with uh, certainly people here and, and, and the crowd is responding to it. Um, but he's going to have to answer those questions, too. Um, and, and, and as, again, journalists are fact-checking him, and as we go to the debate and see them interact, hopefully that will become clearer. Yeah, I think something. neither candidate has the advantage on sort of transparency. I mean, Hillary Clinton has a long time problem with that sort of transparency, honesty, straight talk, and, uh, and that reflects in her negatives, in her numbers. Uh, Donald Trump has equal, if not bigger, negatives for other reasons, but along the same track. And so I think it's really incumbent upon these two candidates. Uh, Trump sort of has the first shot at it since he's going to give his convention speech Thursday night. Is how do I talk people out of this really negative image of myself? He's not looking to, like, press the point. He's made it. What he needs to do is find a way to press a different point, which is one of finding more acceptance on a wider range of supporters than what he currently has, because arguably neither one can win with what they've got. Hmm. We'll see how that plays out.